Hey everybody, welcome back. Here we have a Donkey Kong. This one is from Rick Zahn. And that's what we get. So that tells me it's a sync issue. If I were to guess, and sure enough, I throw my probe on here. And this red line uh, should be pulsing low every time there's a horizontal sync. And then pulsing low and staying low for a while when there's a vertical sync. And it's not doing anything. So, uh, but the good news is I can kind of see color in here. I can see, um, you know, like the title screen has a lot of blue and green in it, and so I suspect that's what that is. And then you see a lot of the maroon and the blue. Those are probably the girders and whatnot. And so it looks like the game is actually running, and there's probably image data there that wants to be displayed. But because I have no sync, it can't, uh, it can't sync to the monitor. So let me flip this guy over. This is the, the CPU PCB, and on the bottom is the video. So let me flip this guy over. I'll probe around and figure out what, uh, what's causing that sync problem. Okay, so I think the problem was, uh, or is rather, I haven't confirmed it, but I think the problem is I'm getting vertical uh, sync pulses but not horizontal sync pulses. Let me show you what I mean here. So this is actually another board from Rick. Uh, this one is a Donkey Kong Jr., which of course is running fine. Um, and so I threw the, uh, the probe on the same signal. So I don't know if you can see this, uh, but you'll notice here that there's a lot of little uh, pulses here. And actually I can probably zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So these are horizontal pulses. Okay, now let me zoom back out, and you'll see every once in a while you'll see a burst. Or not really a burst, but just it's, you know, it's low for quite a long time, and that's a vertical pulse. Let me see if we can catch one here. Oh, you just saw one over here, this area. There's another one. And so you get a bunch of these little guys, and then one large one when you see a vertical sink. Now let me throw the other board back in there, and you'll see, uh, you'll see the difference. Alright, and here's Donkey Kong again. You can see no horizontal pulses at all. Oh, there's a vertical sync. There's another one. And so we're missing all the horizontal uh, pulses. Now, if I look at the schematics, let me flip over to where this guy is generated. Uh, let me float around and see if I can find it here. There we go. It's right here. It took me a little while to find it. Um, there's some uh, logic here that takes, and of course, this is all blurry. I apologize, but. There's a horizontal sync and a vertical sync, and they're put through an XOR, I believe, to generate the component sync. My suspicion is that we're missing the horizontal and that the vertical is fine. Um, but this is fine because all the logic here generates that horizontal, so it gives me a, a good area to kind of poke around and, and look and see what's going on. And so I'm going to flip the board over and start looking at this area here, and hopefully we'll be able to figure out real quick what's going on with our horizontal sync. So I took a look in this area. And it looks like the problem is with this uh, pot. It's actually shorted, and that's this guy right here. Uh, if you measure between those two terminals, it's short, no matter how many, you know, no matter how I spin this guy. <clears throat> so I need a new one of these, which I don't have, but I do have uh, in this form factor. So I think what I may do is, as I'm waiting uh, for these to come in, I'll go ahead and order them, and I'll throw this in just temporarily so that I can get this thing working. Because I believe there's other issues as well, not just with the sink. There's some sort of sprite issues going on. Um, from the email that I, that I uh, received. So we'll go ahead and throw this in just so I can get an image on the screen and then that way I can work with something and we'll go from there. Alrighty, making some progress. We have our sync back here. But uh, as you'll see in a second, we have no sprites at all on this guy. Um, and there's two sections on the video circuitry, one which handles all the characters and that includes the girders and the stairs and all this stuff. Those are considered characters. And then you have the sprites, which are the, the barrels and Donkey Kong and uh, Jumpman and all that good stuff. And so, so that's good. I mean, at least it isolates, you know, the issue. So I have to start digging in. Um, actually, these are the video schematics here, I believe. And um, all the stuff down here, all these ROMs down here, those are all for the sprites. And all that data kind of goes through here, through this little RAM, and then comes through and gets muxed in with the character data here. So I think the first thing I'll check is that mux, because if the, let's say that mux is pegged uh, in one direction or the other where it's only allowing the character data to go through, then you know the sprite data could be there and ready to go and it's not getting sent through. Uh, if it is working properly, well then I'll have to start going back to where uh, this RAM is and working my way back through you know, all the uh, sprite logic. So it looks like a mess, but it's actually, as I'm looking at it a little bit more and more, it's not too bad. So yeah, I'll start with that mux and I'll work my way back and uh, we should be able to find this guy relatively soon and get this thing uh, back in good shape. Well, I was working on it and the whole thing went blank. Um, actually, I saw 
like Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong, the entire half part of the screen was replicated down here, and then it kind of got weird again, and I saw like Donkey Donkey and something something, it, uh, it was acting really squirrely, and then the whole thing went blank, <clears throat> and whenever you see something like a, a section of graphic repeated another time, that's a huge clue that there's a problem with your horizontal uh, or, or vertical, depending on the orientation of your monitor and how the schematics are labeled, but one of those address counters, vertical or horizontal address counters, and those counters on Donkey Kong are way up here in the video PCB as far as the schematic goes, they're up here in the top. And the way this works is you have a counter down here that's counting every horizontal line and then every other horizontal, well these, these signals pulse every horizontal line, every other horizontal line, every fourth horizontal line, and then it moves over to you know every eighth, every sixteenth, thirty-two, sixty-four, and so on and so forth. And so basically they, they're daisy chaining these guys together. So when this counter reaches its max value, it sends a little pulse to this guy, letting it know that it can start counting. And, and likewise, when this guy reaches its max value, it sends a pulse to this guy, lets it know that they can continue to count. So it's creating one huge counter out of these three little mini counters, if you want to look at it that way. What I'm seeing is that the output of this counter is totally fine, except for the carry out that, that follows over to these guys, to let these guys to... Uh, to know that they need to count up. Um, and we can kind of look at that. Actually, I have my little probe here. And so if I start probing, let's see, the, the smallest counter here is at 1N, which is this guy right here. And so if I start looking at the outputs, and I have my scope probe because I wanted to actually look at the integrity of the signals, I believe the count, uh, let me just peek over my shoulder here, so pins 11 through 14. Uh, so 9, 10, 11. And so this should be probably the fastest bit. I'm sorry, not the fastest bit. Is it the fastest bit? It is the slowest. So let me start with the fastest to help you guys understand what I'm seeing here. So here's 14. So see how fast that is? And now if I move up one, we should see it about half that speed. See how the, uh, the spacing between the pulses is wider, so the clock is slower. And then it should get slower still. And then get even slower still. Now if I look at the carry out, the signal lets the other counters know that it's time to count up. That's what I'm seeing there. Actually, I'm seeing a tiny little blip there. But I'm assuming that the driver within this part is bad and such that it's wanting to send that pulse to the other chips, but it's not doing that. So let me replace this guy. This is just a simple counter at one end. And hopefully that'll clean up, um, you know, at least the, the replication and the video. I mean, I got to see what I'm doing here so I can figure out what the problem is. So I will start with that. Uh, so just give me one moment here. Well, I had that sync problem tackled for about 15 minutes, and then the damn thing went black on me again. Um, so I just thought I would share with you some of the stuff that I'm seeing. This is the counter that I replaced, a simple 4-bit counter. And I have some signals that I'm probing, and I'll show you that in a second. This is where the counter is on the schematic, like I showed. Um, so there's a bunch of inputs that are not really being used. Um, all these guys here, which is basically just the, the preset value of the counter. Um, and the clear signal is not being used, and that's all getting pulled up by this resistor here. And then we have the output bits. This is the least significant bit, and then, then it kind of moves up on from there. So if you were to probe these guys, you'd see this guy wiggling quite a bit. This guy half as much, this guy half as much as that guy, and so on and so forth. You know, powers of two. Um, what I'm seeing is there's crosstalk between these output bits and this pull-up net here. And so this guy, like I said, I should probe him. It's probably five volts should be about 5 volts, but over time you'll see this guy change to match, start matching um, actually several of these signals kind of mucks on top of each other and so it was really interesting to see that. So here we have, uh, actually let me fire this board up because it's not fired up at the moment. If we fire it up, okay, so here's the least significant counting signal. You can see it counting away and there's the 5 volts, right? That's the pull-up net. And you can see there's no crosstalk whatsoever. It actually looks pretty clean. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this here, and we're going to revisit it in about, you know, five minutes or so, and you'll see what's going on on this net right here. And then I'll start probing some of the other signals, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, um, about how some of these counting signals are actually getting mucked together and kind of um, interfering or cross-talking with that pull-up net. So let me leave this guy here, and we'll, we'll be back in a little bit. All right, so here we are about five minutes into it, and you can already see what's going on here. And we're just going to let it get even worse. What you'll see is over time, it actually, oh, see, it actually went away a little bit. Now it's back. Now it's gone, and it comes back every once in a while. So we let this cook a little bit more. And it, I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty convinced it has something to do with 
the way the traces are laid out, and I'll kind of show you that in a little bit. But I want to see, I want to show you guys exactly how bad this gets. So we'll let it, let it cook for a little bit more. All right, can you see that a little bit? So now it's actually taking on not only some coupling from this signal, but let me move this up. Hopefully, I can do this here. Oh, I still got it. Is that the right guy? Yeah. So you can see there's coupling now from a few of these signals, not just the high frequency ones, but a couple of the lower ones, some of the lower bits and the upper bits. Now, if this gets below a certain threshold, right, the logic is trying to determine whether this is a one or a zero. And I want to say the the uh, the reference is right about here. It's right below this blue signal. So eventually, we're going to see this screen wigging out because it's going to lose uh, track of where it is. Ignore the phone for a second here. Let's see if I can capture this. So we're getting dangerously close, and yeah, you can see now that it's starting to uh, get squirrely here. And what this is doing, just to kind of further explain what's going on, um, that signal, one of that pull-up signals, is going to a clear. And so this guy's counting away, and then all of a sudden, you know, right when this gets low enough, and you can see it's kind of moving up and down here, right? When it gets low enough, it clears this whole counter. What do these counters do? These are the horizontal counters that get sent to all of the display logic. In addition, it gets sent to all the sync logic. You can see the horizontal sync is grabbing some information from up here. And so I'm constantly losing sync and other sketchy stuff is going on. Anyway, the game is hosed with this kind of problem. So I think I understand what's going on. Let me see if I can explain this um, by going to the whiteboard. All right, so I, very crude drawing, I know, but uh, I think it'll get the point across. So these are the two counters located at 1M, 1N and 1M, and these are just the footprints, you know. There's 14 pins, or yeah, 16 pins, rather, for each counter. Pin 1 is kind of designated down here in the lower, move this down, in the uh, lower right. And so if you look at the pinout and the schematics, actually, uh, pins, I think it's 3, 4, 5, and 6, are those inputs and they're not being used or they're all being pulled up so I believe the way it is is there's a resistor right on the PCB that's tied to 5 volts and so if you look below on the bottom side of the PCB there's this big rail here there's this big um, you know copper bar not copper bar but you know what I'm saying big copper trace that connects all these guys together since they're not being used um, from a functional point of view but they are all being tied to 5 volts now this other guy over here let me grab another marker so you can kind of see Coincidentally, pins 11, 12, 13, and 14 are the counter's outputs, and those guys are being traced on top of the PCB, however, right on top of that bar. So you have this voltage bar below, and you have these signals, these high-frequency signals on the top, and what's happening is the circuit board itself is acting as a capacitor, and so you're getting uh, decoupling from these lines down through to these other pins. Now I haven't checked other Donkey Kong or Donkey Kong Junior PCBs which has the similar layout to see if they're getting the same effects. I assume they may be, you know, a little bit as the FR4 which is the material that the PCB is made of heats up but it certainly, it certainly shouldn't be as bad as what I'm seeing I mean because Nintendo would realize this and would have to relay this out so I don't know if it's just the nature of this board that I'm looking at in particular. Um, I think what I may do is pull my socket off and make sure that there's nothing else uh, on the PCB that may be causing a problem because you know there's two ways you can get capacitance one is is between the top and the bottom of the board the other is if there's some kind of material that accidentally got left on here when I threw my socket on in which case it would be capacitance between the pins in this direction you know horizontally and vertically if you can kind of get the picture so I think what I'll do is pull the socket off uh, clean it all up and then uh, and then run it again of course, I won't see any video because this chip is going to be gone and the video will be sketchy. But I can still, um, you know, probe these points and figure out their still capacitance issue. If there is, then I may have to figure out, you know, if I have to reroute these. You know what I mean? Trim them here and then use some wire to kind of rework it. I really hate to do that if I don't need to. Um, but I don't know. Let's let's not worry about it now. Let me pull this uh, chip off again and uh, let it heat up and reprobe the guy and uh, see if it's a problem. I do notice that it gets worse as temperature you know, increases on it, so um, we'll just have to let it cook and, and see what's going on. Yeah, I'm, anyways, I'm not sure how interested any of you guys are seeing this kind of stuff, but this is, um, this is the socket I pulled it off. This is the back side of that PCB. Uh, and you can see all, those, uh, all these pins here that are stitched together. 
those are the ones that were uh, tied up through a pull-up resistor, which is actually on the other side of the board right there. And then you can see all the lines coming from the other chip are going right over that on the top side of the PCB. Uh, and I think that's what's causing the problem. Anyway, I'll throw this back on and let's start probing some stuff. Okay, so back on minus the uh, minus the IC that we removed. Of course, no video because we're not getting any sync. Um, and nothing yet. So let's leave this on there for a little while longer, see if it heats up, and uh, check again. We'll check back and see what happens. Well, this guy's been sitting here for about a half an hour and no uh, problems whatsoever. So that's good. Um, and I even actually heated this up with my heat gun a little bit to see if maybe temperature was a factor when it wasn't. Um, so I'm thinking maybe it was something that was sandwiched between the socket that I put in and the PCB. That's one thing. Or, um, and I thought about this a little bit more, it could have been the type of socket I use. I actually have two types of sockets. And, uh, you know, i got a drawer full of these things, so I don't really look at them in too much detail. I pull them out and throw them in. Um, but there's a big difference between the legs on these guys. You probably can't tell with this camera, but... Um, if I were to hold these guys, let's say, actually, let me just kind of go over here and explain it. So some of the pins actually, uh, or some of the sockets rather, have pins that are manufactured this way and some this way. And so you think about a cross section. If I actually put a pin in this way, that's a lot of surface area in this direction that's running parallel to those traces that are uh, going in the same direction. And so that adds to the capacitance. If I turn that guy this way, it's a very thin amount of metal, okay, that's up against the... Uh, those traces, so there's a there's a very small amount of capacitance there. So just something as simple as that can can cause you know quite a difference. So I think what I will do is is just take a socket that I have that's kind of oriented like this, where the pins are kind of uh, designed this way. Throw that in there, and uh, of course clean this up. Make sure there's nothing there between the socket and the PCB, and uh, solder that guy in. Again, put the part back on, and uh, see if uh, all these problems go away. Hopefully that'll be it. There's still you know like we saw there's a um, uh, problem with the sprites, but we'll get to that first. I, mean, I need to be able to see what I'm doing to, to kind of debug that, so let's take care of this first. I think we're almost there. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Either the socket or something that was beneath it. I'm starting to wonder if it was just the socket that I used, so that's coming up fine. Of course, there's a missing sprite, and uh, the game is still missing sprite, but at least I can kind of move on at this point, so let's start digging into the sprite circuitry and uh, bring those guys back. Well, it took me a long time, but I think I have a handle on what's going on with this guy here. I actually had to force the video board into a known state, um, and so I did that by flooding the video RAM with ones using the Fluke, and then using uh, blank EEPROMs to uh, constantly drive ones out of the uh, the ROM circuitry down here, so that I can make sense of the shifting and everything like that. If everything's toggling, it's hard to tell whether or not it's an issue or things are working properly, so by just flooding it with a known value, it makes things a lot easier. So that's what I did. Anyway, the way this logic works, and there's se several locations that do this. For example, if you look at the final mux, we have we're muxing character data and sprite data, and the way it knows to determine, I'm sorry, the way it determines which to display is just the use of this little OR gate here. Basically, what it's saying is, if there is sprite data, then go ahead and display that. If there isn't, then go ahead and display the character data. And that's why you can have sprites kind of look like they're overlaying on top of characters as they're walking, you know. Um, in different directions and things like that, or enemies, you know, they can kind of flow over, you know, background characters like the ladders and things like that. You know, the fireballs, I'm thinking of the second stage where you got the fireballs, for example. So that exists over there. It also exists over here. You can kind of see the same thing. Here's a, here's a, a couple of muxes with that same OR gate there. And uh, that basically takes the data, either the character or the um, sprite data, and can dump it into these... Um, uh, this memory here. Actually, I think that's what it does over here. In this case, it's either refreshing the memory or, or grabbing new data. But anyway, um, the purpose is the same. Basically, to, to look to see if I have any data. If so, go ahead and write it. If not, then just reuse what was already there. Anyway, long story short, I think there's something going on with this MUX here. Um, I brought it up on the logic analyzer, and you can kind of see, uh, hopefully you can kind of see. Let me move this back just a little bit. Okay. And so the select signal is the third one from the bottom. You can see it's going up. And when it goes up, it should select uh, whatever's on B. And you can see B here is also up, but the output is pegged at ground. So I think that's the problem. Um, we're going to swap that guy. I, I, I'm pretty sure I got a handful of these. What are they? Let me see here. Uh, which guy is this? 3J. That is a 157. Oh, yeah, I got plenty of those. So I will pull him, and uh, hopefully we'll get uh, some of this working again. Well, no luck. 
even though that MUX was definitely bad and I verified that it is now working, I'm still not getting uh, Sprite. So uh, I had to probe around a little bit more and uh, in particular looking at the control signals that allow me to shift all this data out, trace that back through all the way to this, this video RAM here. And the most significant bit, bit 9, uh, controls that. And what I'm seeing on my little waveform here is there's a ton of noise on those lines. You can see this is the data coming into the RAM, this is the data coming out of the RAM. Even the right enable to the RAM looks, looks horrible. And eventually that trickles down to this signal here, which is the control signal for, um, for all this stuff to kind of happen. So there's definitely something going on. That, that bit, the input bit to that RAM, is driven by a massive uh, AND gate, which basically looks at a bunch of the values of the horizontal counter, horizontal address counter, ANDs them all together and sends it into there. So I'm going to start taking a look at that gate because something, something looks wrong there. Finally, I think we have it. Turns out that, uh, which guy was it now? Let me move this around. This guy here, uh, the output didn't match the input. And so at first I suspected him, so I swapped him out, but the problem didn't go away, which led me to believe that it was actually the input of either one of these two guys driving back and screwing up the output of that guy. And sure enough, it was this guy right here, 5P. Uh, inside, the output was uh, shorted to the input. And so it was totally messing up that little area. And that's all it was. So, yeah, I think there's still a little bit of sync issues. As this guy heats up, you'll, you'll see some waviness, and then it loses a little bit of sync here. So i got to clean that up. But I think the uh, the worst is behind us, and I can kind of just take care of that. Let, let it sit here for a little while and trace that one down. But, yeah, I think we're just about there. So a little bit of tweaking, and this one will be all set. This is probably the lengthiest Donkey Kong repair I've ever done. Lots of issues with this board. You can kind of see if I have it this way, you can see I replaced that one, that one, that one, that one, and these two counters here. So quite a bit of repair done on this one, but hey, uh, I think it was worth it because it's working. So there you go. We'll catch you on the next one. Okay, so we got our sync issues fixed here. Uh, whoa, at least I thought we did. What's going on here? Seriously? How many times do I have to fix this?